Hello students and families, my name is Jen and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist at Tri-State Memorial Hospital. We are pleased to present you with health and nutrition tips for you to use at school and at home with your families. Today's topic is using the oven. Well, first things first, make sure you ask an adult for permission and always have an adult nearby when you're using the oven. So you may remember from the reading the recipe lesson that there are three words that indicate use for an oven. That's baking, broiling, and roasting. So there are three types of ways to use an oven. There's the conventional oven, which is the most common, ty common type. So there are little heating elements, like little coils that you may have seen before on the bottom of your oven. And that is what we use for conventional cooking. So usually if you're baking or roasting, you can use that. Um, very similar to conventional cooking is convection. Convection has a little fan in the back of your oven and it actually turns the heat and circulates the heat throughout the oven which gives a more even cook. So instead of having hot spots and cold spots in your dishes, it's an even heat. So sometimes that's preferred and it also cooks a little bit faster if you're using a convection oven. And another option is to use broiling. Now broiling, instead of using the elements or heating coils on the bottom, uses the heating coils on top. And that gives a very direct heat straight to the food because there's no cooking sheet or baking dish in between. So it's very, very hot, which means we have to be super careful not to get burnt. Anytime you're broiling, that's a good idea to have an adult nearby to do that. Um, because it cooks very, very fast and we don't want you to get burnt. So those are three types of ways to use the oven. I also want you to keep in mind that usually you need to preheat the oven before use and it takes about 10 minutes to do so. So while you're preparing your ingredients, it's a good idea that at that time to go ahead and turn on the oven so that by the time your ingredients are ready, your oven will be ready for use. It's always good practice that when you open the oven that you turn your face away from the oven because you don't want that hot heat coming straight to your face. You wanna protect your face. Keep your hands protected with oven mitts. Using towels and rags often doesn't help for long and the heat can go through very quickly. Um, so be careful with that. Use very thick oven mitts. My favorite is a silicone oven mitt um, because you can put it on your hands and that way it doesn't fall off. Okay, and watch the door when you open it. Make sure that the way you're positioned when the door is open that your belly's not going to touch the door or your forearms or your legs, you wanna be very careful with that. And then also, when you go to grab a dish, you wanna be careful that your, your forearms or your hands don't touch the racks or the top of the oven too. This is why it's probably a good idea to have an adult get dishes out of the oven. Make sure you're never too far away from the oven uh, because sometimes things catch on fire and burn and you want to make sure you're close by and that obviously that an adult is close by. You always know where your extinguisher is, your fire extinguisher, and know how to use that. Have that conversation with an adult on what to do in case of an emergency. Okay, well we're going to do a little bit of practice with the oven. We'll be making peanut butter pumpkin loaf. And this recipe can be found in your Superfoods for Super Kids cookbook on pages 32 through 34. Stay tuned. Well, hello, students and families. This is Jen, and I have Hadley and Kaya with me. And today, we're going to do a little practice with our oven. And so we have a wonderful recipe that you can use for breakfast or for a snack, and it's called peanut butter pumpkin loaf. And you can find this recipe on pages 
33 and 34. <clears throat> okay, so what we have here is we have all of our ingredients already measured out, um, but we need to turn on our oven. So Hadley, will you go turn on the oven, please? We need it on 350 degrees. Okay, so she just pressed bake and it went right to 350 degrees, so she pressed start. Okay, so we have all of our dry ingredients, which is our whole wheat flour and cinnamon and nutmeg and baking powder. Kaya, can you go ahead and stir our dry ingredients? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, and now we'll start adding our wet ingredients into the wet bowl. Now we already have our canola oil in there. And Kaya, go ahead and add the pumpkin puree. You can kind of tip your bowl down so that gravity helps. We have applesauce. Good job, Kaya. Okay, that's good. Go ahead and get the applesauce in there. one should be a little bit easier. There we go. And then we have our maple syrup. So the applesauce and maple syrup are going to add the sweetness to our pumpkin loaf. So go ahead and add the maple syrup, Kaya. The maple syrup into the wet bowl. Mm-hmm. That way we don't have to add any additional sugar. Just use our natural ingredients. Okay, so Hadley, if you wanna go ahead and add your wet ingredients, which would be the peanut butter. This recipe would probably work better with creamy peanut butter, but we just had um, chunky peanut butter, so that's what we're gonna use. And you know what, we might like it because it might have a little more texture to our pumpkin loaf. And then we have our eggs. Okay, so Hadley, you're going to stir the wet ingredients. Please go ahead and do that with your wooden spoon right there next to the bowl. Okay, make sure your eggs, the egg yolk gets broken and it gets nice and one, one color. Ooh, that's a good color. It's a good color. It's okay. Sunset color. Yeah. Stir it a little bit more, Hat, so that it's all the same texture. And then what we'll do is we'll add the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients. And then our last step will be to spray the pan and put the ingredients into the pan and then place it in the oven. Okay, Kaya, I think we are ready for dry ingredients to go into the wet bowl. Good work. Okay, Hattie. Why don't you stir that about 20 times, all the way around. Are you counting? Okay. So make sure every time you go around, you grab more of the dry stuff and you get it into the wet stuff. And the reason why is if we over stir it, we'll get lumps in our product. And too big of bubbles, we don't want that. We want a nice, even product. When you go around, get the dry stuff into the wet. It's gonna be so good. I can't wait to taste that. So what's great about this recipe? I think we're getting close to 20, right, Had? Okay, so we have all of our natural ingredients. We have a little extra fiber from the pumpkin and the applesauce, and also from the nuts and the peanut butter. 
And we have our whole grain wheat, which also adds fiber and nutrients. And then we have peanut butter, which is going to provide us with protein. So this pumpkin loaf should really give us some nutrients that last us pretty long. So, okay Hattie, we need to go ahead and spray the pan. And the reason why we spray is so that we don't stick the ingredients to the side of the pan. We want it to come out nicely. So did you get the sides? That's pretty good. Okay, go ahead and scoop the mixture into the pan. Okay, and I just heard our oven. Our oven is preheated. Usually it takes about 10 minutes. I did it a little bit quicker for us this time, so. Um, what we'll do is we'll finish scooping that into the pan and then I will be putting it into the oven because the oven is super hot. It's always a good idea to have an adult place food and retrieve food from the oven. So we'll be doing that and then we'll show you our finished product here in a moment. See you soon. Hey, students and families, we're back. Um, we have our pumpkin, our peanut butter pumpkin loaf already. Um, so what's great about this is it has the pumpkin, so we're getting lots of vitamin A for our night vision. And it's loaded with all sorts of nutrients from the peanut butter and the applesauce and whole grains. Um, and it's going to last us for a long time. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to slice it up into small pieces and we're gonna have some breakfast. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.